got several pulling in, trickling in, and we'll let them get in, but we'll go ahead and get begin started today. Welcome to Homecoming. I'm glad you're here. I want to read you one verse before the choir comes and leads us in worship today that the Lord showed me in my quiet time this morning is Psalm chapter 111, verse number 1. Here's what the psalmist said. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. That's God's desire today is that we don't give him half of our worship, but we give him all of our worship. God's desire today is that everything you've carried in here, that you would lay it down and you would lift up your hands because we're free to worship today because of the debt that Jesus paid. Aren't you glad that we can worship the Lord? Let's be unashamed today and let's worship him in spirit and truth. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you for the privilege you've given to us to be in your house today. Lord, thank you for the homecoming service where we can gather for fellowship. And Lord, maybe those that haven't been here in a while come and worship with us. And we pray today that you would remove distractions and Lord, remove the uh, things of our minds this morning that we could worship you. I pray that we would be filled with reminders, God, of how good you've been to us. And Lord, I pray today, whether we're in the valley or whether we're on the mountain, that we would choose to lift our hands and worship you because you're worthy of our praise. Lord, we rebuke Satan from this place in Jesus' name, and we pray that heaven would come down and glory fill our souls today. And Lord, that you would do what nobody else can do. We ask it in your name, the name that's above every other name. Amen. Let's stand together. Choir, you come. Let's worship the Lord this morning. coming one day our Lord's going to come we're going to have a grand homecoming we're going to do some old fashioned bread by candles this morning and we'll step out and shake hands just a few minutes so you follow along on the screen right there would you do that amen I once was lost in sin but Jesus took me Let's have a little talk with Jesus. Let's tell him all about it. 
is the old time religion. Amen. Tommy going to play. Won't you step out, shake someone's hand, make them feel welcome on the homecoming Sunday. Would you do that?
going to dismiss Jesus, kids. If you got a kid who wants to go out, Miss Leslie standing in the back door. We'll go ahead and uh, get that, let the kids go out. Amen. Hey, you know, for Mother's Day and Father's Day, we always recognize our mothers and our fathers, and I know we got that coming up, but it's homecoming, right? Let's recognize people at homecoming. Let's see, do we have any first-time visitors to our church today? Today would be your first-time visitor to our church. Anybody? In the back, well, you win a prize. You get to eat lunch first, okay? And you get to pick who you want to go eat lunch with. Preferably somebody with a blue suit, blue checkered shirt, yellow tie, blue glasses. They'll people direct you to help you out. Amen. What about, uh, we got, I know Miss Mary Lou's here. Miss Mary Lou is probably our oldest active member of our church. Amen, right? Yeah, amen. So that deserves a big round of applause, right? All right. Uh, did, did we have anybody travel for homecoming? Anybody over 100 miles come to church today? All locals. All right, well, good. Well, it is homecoming Sunday. We appreciate that. Our pastor will speak more about that in a few minutes. Our praise team and our youth are going to come up. We're going to sing a few songs, and, uh, and then our pastor will come to preach this morning. So, team, you come on up, and we'll, uh, we'll sing a few songs for you. You eat last. <laughs> yeah, that'll get you last place.
God, you will do that this morning. Glorious day. One day he's coming. Amen. 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 came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Sometimes it takes a mountain. 
give me Jesus I thought I could control whatever life would throw my way but this I will admit has brought me to my knees I need you Lord and I'm not ashamed to say sometimes So many times I question certain circumstances and things I could not understand. Many times in trials, my weakness blurs my vision. That's when my frustration gets so out of hand. It's then I am reminded I've never been forsaken. I've never had stand one test alone look at all the victories the spirit rises up in me and it's through the fire my weakness is made strong he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to Show up and he will take you through the fire again. 
you just want to sing a couple songs for our pastor comes to preach this morning. So you, you come ahead. They've been practicing hard, so you lift them up and clap for them, too.
We give them another hand clap and thank them for that. That's wonderful. Amen. Amen. The future is bright for Black Oak Baptist Church. Somebody say amen. We got one up here to preach and we got enough that can sing. So amen. I thank God.
for that. Take your Bibles with me this morning quickly to Luke chapter number 14. Luke chapter number 14. I want to do my best to do what the Lord has put on my heart for this hour, and I pray that you listen. Brother Roger has no idea what I'm preaching, but he said it before they sang that there's a great homecoming service that's ahead of us. Are you glad for that? I'm not talking about this morning. The service this morning has been wonderful already. We'll go eat in a little while, and that makes any Baptist happy. I know if you leave and you don't eat with us, I just assume that you're Church of God or Pentecostal, that you're not Baptist this morning. And our text this morning will tell us about a great feast in heaven. That's why I know the denomination of Jesus had to be Baptist. Amen. I'm just kidding. The Baptist did not exist when Jesus was on earth. Stand with me this morning if you're able. Reverence God's word. You pray for me, you pray for yourself. Luke chapter 14, verse 15 this morning. The Bible said, And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. And he sent his servant at supper time, saying to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they said, One with all consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, I thank you for the worship that we've already experienced this morning. I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that you have the name that is above every other name. And I'm thankful that one day at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord to the glory of God. Lord, I'm thankful for the worship this morning. I'm thankful that we have an eternity of worship ahead of us, Lord. But what I do know is that we do not have an eternity of preaching ahead of us. And I pray this morning, Lord, that you would make preaching effective. I pray you would make it easy. Lord, I pray you would empty me of myself and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, just sit me on the pew this morning, and I pray that you would preach to our hearts. Lord, I thank you for the homecoming service that's ahead of us. But, Lord, I know this morning that there's some that aren't ready for that homecoming service. And I pray that during this homecoming service, they would prepare their heart for the one that is to come. Lord, I ask you to do this morning what nobody can do but you. And I pray you'd meet with us and give us unction and liberty in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I invite you to leave your Bible open this morning with the help of the Lord. I'd like to take an expository approach and just look at what the text says this morning. But I'm reminded of what Jesus is doing in Luke chapter 14. If you're not familiar with the context in verse number 1, he goes to one of the chief Pharisee's house and he's sitting there and he begins to teach them by parables. We know that's what Jesus did and he begins to tell them about a great supper and when they prepare for the great supper he tells them when they go in to sit down not to sit in the place of highest authority but to sit in the place of lowest authority lest somebody should come and the servant should remove them from their seat and should put them in the lower place to sit down. What Jesus was telling the Pharisees He says, you need to lay aside your pride because obeying the law does not make you above everybody else. Well, one of the Pharisees didn't understand what Jesus was saying in verse 7 through verse number 14. And he begins to ask him and he said, blessed are those that will eat bread in the kingdom of God. This parable that we just read is the Lord's answer to this Pharisee of who will be in the kingdom of God and who will be part of this homecoming service. By way of introduction, how do I know 
that there'll be a homecoming service? How do I know that one day we will, the redeemed will gather on the sunny banks of deliverance where we will worship the Lamb of God for all of eternity? John saw in Revelation 19 and verse number 7 a worship service in heaven. And the Bible said, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife hath made herself ready. And her, to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm reminded in John chapter number 14 of the encouraging words of our Lord when he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, he said, are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. Listen to the words of Jesus. I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. Goes right there. And Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again again and receive you unto myself isn't that good news this morning amen you know if you don't say amen i have the authority as the pastor to not let you eat lunch today so you might as well say amen at the message how many of you is glad that the lord is coming again my mind understands illustrations and that's the way that the lord speaks to me but just still by way of introduction i begin to think about this this week and this morning about the lord coming again and did you notice that in the text that we read it said that all things were fulfilled i'm getting ahead of myself but he tells his servant all things are ready for the marriage to begin i just think about my own wedding day brother Paul, that's the best that I can understand it. And to understand the context of John 14, uh, that in that day, the uh, both parties of the, the spouse and the groom, both spouses, their parents would select for them who their spouse would be. And then they, so the groom would go and he would begin to prepare a place for him and the bride to live. And when that place was finished, when he added the addition to his father's house, he would come and he would get his bride and they would go and enter into to a seven day wedding feast in the culture of that day I, I think about my own wedding day I, I think about the morning that I woke up when I did not sleep a lick during the night I, I remember being so nervous I remember getting in my father's truck uh, and I'm going somewhere with this if you'll listen to me and I remember my father taking me to the place uh, where I would be espoused to my bride uh, I remember we had made plans we had been engaged that the time had finally come. Can I say this morning that the bride of Christ is in the engagement period and there's coming a day when Jesus will finish the addition on the Father's house and when he's going to come back and take his bride to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I think about I stepped on the property in that little bitty church where Haley grew up and uh, they put us upstairs in the back room of the church where I was so nervous, Dawson, I could not think straight. Uh, I remember standing with Haley's pastor in the back hallway uh, and with Brother Scott Jones in the back hallway of that church uh, and I remember they were about to open the door uh, and buddy, as the groom, I was trembling. Uh, I was excited. Uh, I was ready to see my bride. Uh, can I say I'm no pity? picture or typology of the lovely Lord Jesus uh, but Paul said he's sitting on the throne right now uh, and one day with a shout and the voice of the archangel uh, the dead in Christ will rise uh, and then we which are alive and remain uh, shall be caught up together with the Lord uh, and so shall we ever be uh, with the Lord uh, did you know Jesus is sitting on the right hand side of the Father uh, with excitement in his being uh, ready to come and to take his bride home are you excited about that I remember we walked out of the door and that church was full and I didn't have any questions to run she probably did I was just trying not to pass out and I remember standing there and in that church there's two uh, doors just like in our church but there was glass panes in both of them and maybe more from her perspective than my perspective but as the groom I stood at the altar uh, and I was ready to make my vow uh, and while listen to me this morning while two doors were closed uh, I could not see her uh, but as the ushers opened the first set of doors uh, I could see her reflection uh, and then as the wedding music began to play uh, and the second 
can set a doors open. Uh, I saw my bride. Uh, can I say I'm looking through a glass darkly now? Uh, and maybe two sets of doors are closed. Uh, maybe the first set is open. Uh, but I'm glad that when I die, I won't go back to dust. Uh, I'm glad when I die, I won't be reincarnated into a dog. Uh, but I'm glad that when I die, good God Almighty, I'm going home uh, to be with my Father uh, where He's prepared a place for me. There's a more glorious homecoming in the future than we've ever experienced before. Amen. That was just the introduction. Look at verse number 16. I want to look at this and I want the Lord to help us this morning if you listen. Verse number 16. The Lord of the supper said to his servant, I've made a great supper and he bade many. Only a select few were invited to the beginning of this supper. But can I say that I'm glad that heaven does not have a capacity limit. I'm glad that around my father's table there is an unlimited supply of chairs uh, and whoever will can pull up a chair and enjoy the service. I'm glad that everybody is invited to the kingdom of God. In verse number 17, he told his servant of the supper to say to them, Come, for all things are now ready. I think about the words of Jesus in Luke chapter number 21. In verse number 28, speaking on the signs of the time. Jesus told the disciples, uh, and when these things begin to come to pass, uh, look up for your redemption is drawing nigh. I am thankful that there is a day that Jesus is coming, but preacher, for all of my life, pastors have been telling me that Jesus is coming and he's not yet come. We are only closer today than we were yesterday, uh, and we'll be closer after lunch than we are in this moment, but it is inevitable that the Lord is coming again and nobody will stop his return and I wonder this morning are you prepared for the homecoming soon in verse number 18 through 20 look at these verses and they all with one consent begin to make excuse the first said unto him I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it I pray thee have me excused and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I can not come. It was a great privilege in that day to get invited to a wedding feast. It was a great privilege to get invited to any kind of great supper. And the servant had went and he had bade the men, such as the Pharisees, to come. And he came back and he said, Lord, they're not coming, but they've all made an excuse. One man of God said, who buys a field without first looking at it? Who buys oxen without first proving them? The law of Deuteronomy tells us that a married man, a new Newly married man was excused from some things. Uh, Deuteronomy 24, chapter 24 tells us that for one year he was excused from war. For one year he was excused from his business affairs for a honeymoon period. Uh, but the Bible does not tell us that he was excused uh, from his personal commitments. It seems that these religious folk had devised a plan, previously planned their excuses to the Lord of the supper and they said Roger they said we're not coming I don't care to the Lord of supper that you have paid a price to prepare what you've done I don't care that you've taken time to do what you've done to invite somebody like me I have more important business can I say there's people not sitting in church this morning because they had more important business than the Lord Jesus Christ I was talking to Haley yesterday, it burns my heart, Brother Curtis. All God ever asked for was one day a week. He asked us to set one day aside as the Sabbath and to rest and to worship Him. But we go to Dollywood on Sunday, we go to Splash Country on Sunday, we play ball on Sunday, we don't go to church on Sunday. We do all of these things. Why can't we give God one day a week? One hour in that one day. Maybe two if He's been good enough. Maybe, maybe on Wednesday night if he's been good enough. They said we've got more important business than the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've got more important business than the Lord Jesus, you're in a wrong boat this morning. He's the most important thing in my life. How about your life? He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. How about you? 
They said, we've got better things to do. Can I tell you what the Lord showed me? There are people today who have pre-planned their excuses at the judgment seat of Christ. There are people who have already thought about, this is what I'll say to the Lord of the Supper. Jesus, I don't care that you died for me. I don't care that you gave your life on Calvary and you laid everything down so that I would not have to face an eternity in hell. Lord, I've been good enough on my own. But those excuses will not be good enough. My mama used to tell me something about excuses that I can't say behind the pulpit. But everybody's got one and not one of them is good enough. They made their planned excuses. Quickly, I won't preach long. Verse 21. So the servant came, and he showed his Lord these things. Then his master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly. Shouldn't that be the picture of the church today? We shouldn't be lethargic with our heads in the sand. We shouldn't be kicked back drinking lemonade in the shade, having it made and thinking, I'm going home to be with Jesus one day. Everything's all right. I might as well just rest. No, if we're going home to be with Jesus, we ought to get busy because we want other people to join the supper as well. He told the servant to go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. These, we believe, are the Jews that the Pharisees had counted unworthy to follow Jesus. Those that were poor, they couldn't do anything for themselves. Those that were blind, they couldn't do anything for themselves. Those that were maimed, in the Greek, that word literally means to be crippled or to be injured. The word halt in the Greek literally means to be injured, and it means to be missing a leg, an amputee, if you will, in our modern-day language. The people that could do nothing for themselves, the Lord of the supper said, Go. And get them. Shouldn't that be what we do? If we go after who we think deserves Jesus, we're, we're not doing it right. But we go after who those that seem like they don't deserve Jesus, then we're doing the Great Commission. Look what he said in verse 22. The servant said, Lord, it's done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. You know what the most glorious thing is about heaven, Brother Paul? It ain't ever going to get full. I'm thankful that... Are y'all listening to me this morning? I'm thankful that when I get to heaven one day, I won't be having some $20 ticket in the nosebleed section watching what's going around on the throne of God, but I'm thankful that my ticket was paid for by the most precious thing in this world in all of eternity, not by silver nor by gold, but by, I feel like preaching for a minute, but by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful that that ticket gets me right in the throne and that I can crawl up in his lap after supper and he'll say good God Almighty he'll say was it worth it after all and I'll say Lord it was worth it after all I'm thankful this morning that I've got a home a place prepared over beyond the great beyond where all the saints of glory will one day share I don't know about you, but I'm more excited to eat heaven's food than I am to eat that food. I'm more excited to get around and listen to Jesus than I am to listen to myself. As much as this choir can sing, I'm more excited to hear the heavenly choir proclaim, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Are you excited for heaven? If you're not, you ought to get excited for heaven. If you can't shout this side of heaven, how are you going to shout that side of heaven? If you can't raise your hand this side of heaven and sing, well, how do you think you're going to do it that side of heaven? Heaven will never run out of room. But verse 23, what did he do? The Lord said unto the servant, Go into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come, that my father's house may be filled. He wasn't telling the servant to go crawl under the evergreen shrubs and look for somebody to tell about Jesus. In the context of that day, that meant outside of the city of Jerusalem. You know who was outside the city of Jerusalem? The Gentiles. You know what the Gentiles were to the Jews? They were unclean. You know who Gentiles are? That's me and you today, unless you're a Jew. We're the Gentiles. We are those that are unclean. And the Lord of the Supper told his servant, go and get them. You know who they were? Those who weren't worthy. Those who didn't deserve Jesus. Those who weren't good enough. Are you hearing me? Those that could do nothing for 
their self. I don't know if that describes you, but it sure does describe me this morning. That I'm glad that one day the Father said to Jesus, you need to go and get him. And Jesus said to the Holy Spirit on September 9, 2011, now is the time that I will draw him to myself. He said that my Father's house may be filled. Did you know today that it's Jesus' desire to save everybody? 2 Peter 3, 9 said, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, but He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Did you know that Jesus gave Adolf Hitler a chance to be saved? Did you know that He wanted him to be saved? Every leader, that song says, that sleeps in their grave, uh, one day will bow and proclaim, but every single one of them had a chance to be saved. Uh, As much as you might not believe it today, did you know that Jesus wants to save Joe Biden, that Jesus wants to save Nancy Pelosi, that Jesus wants to save every wicked leader in our day and hour that his desires, that his house will be full. Sometimes we want our dinner table just to be a select few. Sometimes we just want it to be us. We don't want nobody dipping their hands in our food. But the desire of the Father is that the doors of His house are open and that anybody and everybody can come and get around the throne. Are you glad there's a homecoming service? Preacher, when's it going to be? I don't know, but just go ahead and put it on every day of your calendar because it can happen in the moment of the twinkling of an eye. Last verse this morning, I'm done preaching. We'll go eat something. Somebody say amen. Verse 24, For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Jesus brings it full circle for the Pharisees that are sitting there, that are full of their self, and that think, man, I deserve a chair at his table. He brings it full circle, and he says, those uh, that have made excuses will not have a second a chance. Can I tell you, I've, I've told you this morning that the redeemed are going to the homecoming service. Brother Curtis, I'm going. Are you going? I'm glad I'm going. Because I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. But can I show you three groups of people that the scripture tells us about every time it talks about the groom coming? Can I show you three groups of people, and I'm done, who will not be at the homecoming service? The excuse makers will not be at the homecoming service. In Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 21, Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wondrous works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Lost person, are you hearing me today? person that's not sure if you're going to that homecoming service are you hearing me today no excuse you can think of will be good enough at the great white throne judgment being a good person will not be good enough having a lot of money will not be good enough teaching your Sunday school class is not good enough being a pastor is not good enough Dawson being a preacher is not good enough it's only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ you know the only thing God the Father will accept I'm with him. And mercy will walk in and plead our case. The excuse makers will not be at this homecoming service. You might be an excuse maker this morning, and you're coming to this homecoming service, but you won't go to that one. Matthew chapter number 25 tells us of the second group of people that will not be at the homecoming service, and it will be those who are unprepared. The Bible tells us in Matthew 25 of the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. You know the context. They were sleeping and they were waiting on the bridegroom to come. And it said that they heard the great noise, the great shout. What was it, preacher? The groom was coming to get his bride because all things were fulfilled. And when he came by the way, the five that were foolish said to the five that were wise, they ran out of oil in their lamps and said, give us some of yours that we might have enough. And they said not. Not so, lest we don't have enough. Go and buy for yourself. And those that were prepared entered into the wedding party to go to the seven-day Jewish feast. And those that were not prepared, they went to buy some oil. And by the time they came back, they had missed the boat. Can I say I'm thankful for homecoming service? 
So the Lord burdened my heart with this message because there's people maybe sitting in here this morning that you are not prepared to stand before God. Maybe you're just doing your own thing. They're a picture of those who are living in the world. And hear me, while you're distracted by your sin, while you're living your best life now, the wedding party will leave this world. And if you miss it, there'll never be another chance. People say to me, and I study in Revelation, that there's going to be 144,000, and yes, there will. That will be Jewish evangelists that will come back during the Great Tribulation and will preach the gospel to Jews and Gentiles that they might be saved. But hear me this morning, if Jesus gives you a chance this side of eternity and you turn him down, there'll never be another chance for all of eternity. Can I tell you the last group that won't be there, and then I'm done? The unclothed, Brother Paul. They won't be there. And Matthew chapter 22 is a sister passage to Luke 14. And in it, it's about a wedding feast instead of just a great feast. And the man that had invited those to the Lord of the feast, he came in. And he was observing all that were sitting around his table. And there was one man in verse number 12 that was unclothed. He said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedded, wedding garment? And he was speechless. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm not talking about your physical clothes. And that day it was custom that they were going to a wedding that they were to wear a special garment they were given. And believe it or not, ladies, you're not supposed to wear white to another lady's wedding. We don't want the groom getting confused. But thank God Jesus will not get confused. In that day, listen to me, in that day it was custom to wear white to a wedding. In that day, it was a picture of purity to wear your very best. And that man sat at the Lord's table, and he was not clothed. He was not redeemed. You know what that's a picture of? Those that one day will seek to sit at God's table, but you won't even get inside the gate. You won't even see the table. You won't even see the chair that you would almost get to sit in. But my father will say, outside the gates of heaven you've not been clothed you've not been washed in the blood of Jesus your sins have not been made white as snow you're not pure I wonder this morning who in here is going to that heavenly homecoming I wonder who's already made their reservations you've packed your bags preacher I've not packed my bags good you don't need anything I'm ready to go and join in to that service. I know I'm going beyond a shadow of a doubt. So praise the Lord. I'm glad you're going too. But I wonder this morning, as Brother Rocky comes to the piano, or whoever will, Tommy, whoever will, I'm curious this morning who is sitting in this place and you're not prepared. Maybe this morning you're an excuse maker. Maybe you say, I, preacher, I've, I've, I've done enough for Jesus. I'm sitting in church this morning. Isn't that enough? No, friend, it's not. For pre preacher, I, I give my money. I, I'm going to give in the renovation offering here in just a few minutes. Won't that make me good enough? No, it won't. Maybe you're part of the crowd this morning. Maybe you're not prepared, and you know that you're not prepared. Maybe on the outside you're carrying the lamp, and everybody thinks you've got oil, but you don't. Maybe this morning you say, preacher, I'm not ready to meet Jesus. Or maybe this morning you'd say, Preacher, I know I'm yet in my sin. I know I'm dirty. I know that I'm unclothed. And I know that I have not been redeemed. The most important time of the service is this invitation time. And I pray that you listen. Jesus, the Lord of all glory, has extended an invitation to you. Maybe you've never received it, never heard it before. Jesus has extended an invitation to you today that you can make sure you're going to be part of the marriage supper of the Lamb. Today, Jesus has pulled the proverbial chair out from his table, and he's saying, would you just sit down? The only way, Jesus said in John 14, 6, Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and we don't know how to get there. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. If anybody seeks to come to the Father, he's got to come through me. Let's stand to our feet all across the church. Heads bowed, eyes closed this morning.
I wonder today if there's a child of God that needs to come and say, Lord, I've got some sin in my life. Would you cleanse me and make me ready for the homecoming service? Maybe somebody this morning, maybe a child of God, would just come and say, Lord, thank you that there's a heavenly homecoming. But maybe this morning, somebody sitting in this place is not ready, not prepared. And maybe this morning is the morning that God is offering you an invitation to make preparation. I would love to meet you around the altar today. I can't save you, but I'd love to show you what Jesus can do for you. The invitation has been given. Do you got enough faith to step out and come? Father, I thank you today in Jesus' name for this wonderful service. Thank you for the worship. Lord, thank you that we can feel your spirit and your presence. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this day and hour, in this homecoming service. Thank you for the food that we'll eat in just a few minutes. But, Lord, most of all, I want to thank you that you've invited us to your homecoming service. And I pray this morning that every one of us will make sure that we're ready. Whether that there's sin in our life, I pray we'll repent of it today. Or for that lost person that doesn't know Jesus, I pray today that they would accept your invitation. Lord, draw us to yourself and do what only you can do in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing, if you need to come, would you come? Child of God, would you come? I'm thine, O oh Lord, I have heard the voice and it's this morning preacher I need to get ready on your heart before I give you announcements and we go eat. We're stalling. Chicken's not here. I think that's just the Lord telling me I need to preach another message since Amen. I'm not preaching tonight. I'll sit there. Amen. Well, we got a few things to do. You know about how far a chicken is away? Well, we'll do a few things. You can have a seat for just a minute. we got an offering to take up anyways. 
I was going to do this on the way out. Sorry, Brother Rocky, but we'll do this now. I, I reckon the other plates are still next door, but we've got two plates. So let's do this this morning. Youth praise team, why don't you come back up here? Brother Rick, you come back up here. Let's have them sing what a beautiful name again while we take up this offering if we can. Uh, give me two deacons this morning. Brother David, you come here. My Brother Curtis, you come here. I've only got two plates, so I'll just pass them around there. Amen. This is for our renovation, uh, just one of our offerings that we're taking up to try to provide for what God's going to do. So if you feel led to give, you give. If you're giving your monthly commitments, we thank you for that. But let's pray and ask God to bless this offering, and you give as the Lord leads you to. Father, we thank you today for this offering that, uh, Lord, we can take up. We thank you for this renovation that you're leading our church to do. And I pray this morning that you would, Lord, bless this renovation. I pray that you would bless this offering this morning, God, that it may be a blessing to you and that we would seek to do your will and your will alone. Lord, lead us to give as you lead us to in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give as you feel led to. Y'all sit. Still need to pray. The altars are still open.
worthy of our praise this morning. Let me give you the other announcements for the day. Uh, don't forget, tonight at 6 o'clock, we won't have worship service, but we'll worship through prayer. You come, especially Bible school leaders, I expect you to be here if you can. We're going to gather in the sanctuary for just a few minutes, and we'll split up into teams. There's a few leaders that'll take teams. They don't know about it yet, but they'll take teams, and we're just going to surround this place, inside, outside, every classroom with prayer. Uh, beginning next Sunday night is the biggest outreach that we have all year. We can't reach people overseas until we can reach people in our community. And that's what we'll seek to do. So you invite somebody to Bible school. Starts next Sunday night. Tonight at 6 o'clock we'll have a time of prayer and then we'll start moving things around. Whatever Shine and Zach need us to do, we will do what they say. There's a WOM meeting Tuesday, June 6 at 6.30 in the Education Building. Ladies, you come to that if you can. All church leaders, Bible school leaders, check your email. It's that time of year to do background checks. If you're a church leader and you did not receive yours, uh, please see me or Brother Charlie so we can write your name down. We will get that resent to you. It had a little hiccup in some of them sending, okay? All hearts and minds clear this morning. Let's just dismiss this way. Maybe you all want to play another song if you something, something random. If you got a different song you want to play while we dismiss, Let's just dismiss slowly in fellowship and make our way to the gym, and we'll pray the chicken will be here by then. Please go outside and go that way to the gym. Please don't go through this middle building. So let's, you're dismissed. We'll go eat together, but take your time getting there. Just fellowship for a minute.